semicircle, I'm going to call it F2. Now, in the semicircle, we can do it the efficient way. What do you think the force on the semicircle is going to be? Negative. Yeah, it's the negative of that. So that's the efficient way. But we don't want to do the efficient way. We want some practice. So let's do it the less efficient way. We have to actually do the cross product. Um, so, right, so we already know the answer. F2 should be just whatever this one is with a minus sign. Total has to be zero. So let's actually do that. So for the semicircle, I'm going to um, let me redraw it. Let's pick a DS. Here is DS. That's DS, right? I just tried to draw it a little bigger. Let's say this is angle theta. is this ds, remember the magnitude of ds is r d theta. The r length is ds. Now what's the x component of ds? The x component is this one. It would be what? ds sine theta or ds cosine theta? Sine. Sine is the opposite. Yeah. yeah. See, theta here is adjacent to the y axis, not to the x. So it would be ds uh, times the sine of theta, but it points to the left, so I'll put a minus sign. It points left. So I get uh, minus uh, r d theta times the sine of theta. Let's do dsy. Going to be ds times y. Cosine and it's positive, right? Uh, this one, the y component point is positive, right? So I have uh, r d theta times the cosine of theta. So 
would be S would be this. The minus R D theta sine of theta I hat plus R D theta cosine of theta J hat. That is the S. I just the sum of these two and then just put an I hat or J hat. From the dy in the y direction, like it starts by going up, but then when it gets to the other, yeah. Yeah. but then the angle will make it negative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The cosine will be negative in the second point. Yeah. Yeah. So ds is going to be this. Let's put factor r d theta out, and so we get minus the sine of theta i hat plus cosine of theta times j hat. Okay. So we got our ds. Next we're going to do the cross product. We need to do uh, uh, basically this. So I have this. The ds is i ds cross with b. So I have i This would simplify because what is this? J hat cross J hat. Zero. So that's going to be zero. So this cosine term will go away. And then this I hat cross with J hat is K hat. So we will have this. A minus, I'll put the K hat in front. And then we have our I and R and sine of theta and E theta. Did I forget any symbols? OB? Do I have anything else? Yeah, I'll just leave it. Why would it be there? Because it's J cross J. J cross J, but then I have I hat cross J. Oh, yeah. No. I hat cross J. So that's DF. So it's actually, yeah, the negative goes down, right? So when you add them, you would finally get zero. One more of these before we discuss the motion of charged particles. Magnetic field. So here is the next example. Right here. So we have, uh, let me describe what's going on. I mean, it's written, but let's describe what's going on. We have a copper wire running horizontal, parallel to the floor. So here is a, a copper 
wire, maybe this is our wire, and our wire will, uh, will just drop, right? It will fall. Uh, because gravity will pull it down. But in this case, the wire will have a magnetic field. Uh, I'm sorry, the wire has a current. Uh, either the current is running to the right or to the left. It's along the wire, so it can only go this way or this way. It's running uh, this way or that way. Uh, the magnetic field is into the board. It's uh, this way. This axis meaning mean the magnetic field is in. And the magnetic field is uh, has a magnitude of 0.1 Tesla, but it's in the minus k hat direction. Right? This is the x direction, i hat, j hat. So positive k hat is this way. So into the page of the board is minus k. Okay? So that's the magnetic field strength. Uh, the copper wire has a diameter of one millimeter, okay? and the length is L. The length of the copper wire is L. Uh, they remind you that the density of copper, density of copper is 8920, 8920 kilograms per cubic feet. That's the mass density of copper. Okay? This is mass density, right? Not charge density. And the question is, what's the current? in this wire so that it kind of, it will just float. Meaning the magnetic force which is upward will uh, equal to the gravitational force which is downward. And so they're, if they're equal to each other, it will just, uh, what does it say, serve or float? I forget what it says. Oh yeah, floating, okay, that's the word, okay. It's just floating. So what is the current and in what direction is it, okay? So the gravitational force is always pulls you down regardless, so that's fine. The magnetic force, we would like it to be upward. Okay? We would like the magnetic force to be upward. The current must be to the right or to the left, right? One of them. It can't be out or in. It has to run along the Y. So in what direction should the, magnetic, uh, should the current be so that the magnetic force is up? Right. Right. To the right. I agree. So the current needs to be to the right. Because think about it. Here is here is the magnetic field. Magnetic field is this x, right? Yeah. We want our uh, our force to be up. So let's try. If the current is to the right, meaning the velocity of the charges is also to the right. So you do the cross product, right? V V is this way. V cross V. You get that. So the magnetic force is upward. So yeah, therefore the uh, the current needs to be going from uh, left to right. The current needs to be to right. So the current, current, there are just two options. It can be left or right. And uh, so the current needs to be to the right. Now, how much is the force? Uh, I'm sorry, how much is the current? How do we find that? Well, I know these two forces are equal to each other. Yeah, it's balanced. So I know that the magnetic force must equal to the gravitational force in magnitude. Their magnitudes have to be equal. Their magnitudes have to be equal. The gravitational force is mg, right? Mass times gravity. Magnetic force, what would it be? Uh, I yeah, we can go to these or yeah. So, so it would just be I L B. Okay, the magnetic force is I L B. So let me uh, right here. So the magnetic force is equal to I L cross B. But L is in the I hat direction, yep. and B is uh, into the page. So what's Minus their cross product? J. It would just be J hat. So it would just, the magnitude of the magnetic force, it would be I, L, B, and then the sign of the angle between them is 90. So it's just going to be I, L, B. Oh. That's the magnitude. Uh, let me take the vector away. Magnitude. So it's just going to be ILB. Yeah. Uh, so if you have a cross product, 
It would be the magnitude times the sign, right? But what's the sign? Yeah. So that L is this way, right? The direction of the current. B is there. So they make 90 degrees. And sine of 90 is 1. And how do you know the sign of something? Uh, we're told. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, so sine of 90 is 1, so I won't bother writing that. So it's going to be ILB. Very often it's going to be the case. This ILB we will encounter quite a few times. Okay, uh, so I will write ILB. Now the mass is the density times volume. Right? Density times volume. But that's why I have this product, because it connects mechanics with, with, with magnetism. So density times V, volume, G. So V here is volume, right? What's the volume of this wire? It would be I square I squared I times L, yeah. So you have I, L, V. So the cross-sectional area, which is uh, pi R squared times the length L, G. Yeah, L cancel. And so we want I. So I is going to be the rho times pi times R squared times G divided by B. Now we need to substitute the all the numbers that we're given. So 89, 20 for the density. And then pi. The diameter is one millimeter, so the radius is half a millimeter. That's five times ten to the minus four. I can divide by a thousand square. G is uh, nine point eight, and B is zero point one. That's the magnitude, and so we get the current to be zero point six eight. Can I erase this side yes. of the of the board? Uh, Professor? Yeah. If I want to break down the direction, the L factor and the B factor, so the L factor is on I have directions, right? And the B factor is on negative K hat. K hat. Yeah. And where does the negative go to make our direction become J hat? Well I hat cross K hat is negative J hat. I hat? Oh, I think. Oh, yes. Yeah. I have cross. What? I have cross. Oh, in the x direction. Oh, did it get hurt? Is it along the way? Yeah. Make a video command. Cross. Okay, this negative the negative. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, let me erase this. Yeah, you will need to get really good at cross product. And quick at them too, because yeah, we will be using them a lot. The Actually, any questions on this one before? I, yeah. So for density, we're using kilograms per meter cube. We don't have to convert that or anything. No, it's good.
motion of charge parking of a magnetic So let's consider a positive particle and then a negative particle. Okay? So here is a magnetic field, and it's going to be into the port. So it would be X, right? So here is a magnetic field. would the magnetic force be? Because remember, the force is this. 
the magnetic force is Q V cross V. If it's positive, then this does nothing. It changes, it doesn't change the direction. But if it's negative, it will flip the direction. So if it's negative, yes, V cross V is to the left, but there is a Q in front also, which is this. So the force would be this way. And so what happens is the charge will, instead of going counterclockwise, it will go clockwise. It goes clockwise. So the force is this way. That's the force. Is the, uh, what's the magnitude of the magnetic force in this case? Minus Q. Uh, oh, Q, Q, V sine. V, V, and then sine of theta. So sine what's the angle between V and V? 90. 90. 90. What's sine of 90? 1. 1. So just Q, V, V. The angle is 90, it's Q, V, V. Now I'm going to apply Newton's second law. <coughs> is equal to the mass times acceleration. Right? The net force on an object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. The only force here, there is a magnetic force. That's the only force. And that magnetic force has this magnitude. It's Q, V, V, mass. If you have circular motion, uniform circular motion, what's the acceleration? V squared over R. V squared over R. V squared over R, where R is the radius, right? Yeah. Radius of the circle. we get R to be F circle is going to be yeah. proportional to the mass, the speed, Q, and V. And it makes sense. If, if it's a heavy object, the radius is going to be bigger, right? It's difficult to curve it. Maybe in a smaller circle, it's heavy. If it's moving too fast, it's also going to be a large radius. Uh, if the magnetic field is weak, it's going to be a large radius. So after all, it's curving because of the magnetic field. If the magnetic field is strong, you can get a bigger, a smaller radius. And then if the charge is small, the radius gets bigger. So, uh, there is that. And I want to mention, yeah, let's do the, uh, this next example, and then I want to do uh, one more equation. This example, uh, can I erase these two boards here? <laughs> While you're yeah. reading the example,
Conservation of yeah, this is what you did in the test. Okay. So conservation of energy says the change in kinetic energy is equal to minus the change in potential energy, right? And so I have the change in kinetic energy equal to minus uh, the charge times the change in the magnet uh, in the electron potential, right? Q V, Q delta V. Change in kinetic energy is the final kinetic energy which is one half mv squared. And since the charge starts at rest, uh, the initial kinetic energy is just zero. Uh, minus q times delta v. Delta v is just v, which is 500. 500 volts. What's the charge of an electron? Uh, minus a, yeah. Right, so this is for q. The charge of an electron is minus a. And you know this minus minus is plus, and so you have the speed is going to be two little e capital B divided by m under the square root. And now we plug in the numbers. It's an electron, so we can look up the charge and mass. Two, six, five hundred. Over 
So the radius is going to be 0 0.00846. Yeah. Kinetic energy does not change. And we know that the work done 